a step-by-step approach to the optimized procedure. An 86-year-old female with a BMI of 18 presented with worsening rectal prolapse, rectal pain and parectal bleeding. Her past medical history was significant for hypertension, dyslipidemia, COPD, mild cognitive decline. Previous surgical history was of an open hysterectomy more than 40 years ago via a lower midline laparotomy. Patient was deemed not fit enough for an abdominal approach. On examination she had a full thickness rectal prolapse. As part of preoperative workup a gastrographin enema can be considered to assess the amount of redundant sigmoid present. We routinely bowel prep our patients preoperatively. The patient had a general anesthetic and was given a single dose of intravenous antibiotics at induction. Patient was positioned in lithotomy. An inwelling urinary catheter was placed. Bilateral pudendal nerve blocks were administered. A lone star attractor was placed and the full length of the prolapse was assessed. The resection margin was scored circumferentially just proximal to the dentate line. This dissection is carefully carried out circumferentially. A full thickness incision is then made into the peritoneal cavity. It is important to note that at this point there may be loops of small bowel in the pelvis and hence careful dissection is required to avoid inadverted injury. We routinely divide the mesentery with a bipolar energy device. In this case we have employed the use of a league assure impact. Meticulous hemostasis is ensured during the entirety of the dissection. Bowel lumen is checked regularly during the dissection to ensure that only the correct layers are divided. Once the prolapse is fully dissected, attention is then turned to the levator muscle and an anterior levatorplasty was performed using a slowly dissolving suture, in this case we have used a zero vacral. PDS suture may also be used for the levatorplasty. Levatorplasty is generally performed to fulfill two purposes in this procedure. Firstly, it helps to reconstitute the anorectal angle. Secondly, it helps by adding bulk to the repair. We acknowledge that a posterior levatorplasty is more commonly performed, however, Due to the patulous nature of the bowel and tissues anteriorly in this patient we elected to perform an anterior levatorplasty to add bulk to the repair. In our experience, we have found outcomes to be equivalent with an anterior or posterior levatorplasty. The bowel is divided quadrant by quadrant and stay sutures are placed to form the basis of the anal anastomosis.
Vacryl may also be used for the coloanal anastomosis. Further sutures are placed to complete the circumferential hand-sewn coloanal anastomosis. Our patient had an uncomplicated post-operative recovery. Her bowels opened day two post-operatively and she was subsequently discharged home. On routine clinic follow-up she remains asymptomatic with no evidence of recurrence.